Hello and welcome to Extra Time with me, Anne-Marie Bojan and Midland Saturday special presenter, James Bratpool. Joining us today are Ryan, James and Tom from West Tomwich Albion. That's right, it's West Tomwich Albion. Guys, do you want to start telling us about the name, where that came from? Uh, well, a, a few years ago, uh, no surprise to people that know me, I got injured playing football. Um, and since the age of sort of 17, when one of my friends got diagnosed uh, with leukaemia, um, I've done quite a bit of charity work, so sort of put two and two together and decided to keep, keep a group of friends together. And we, we did um, a charity football game for the um, Movember charity. Um, it was really successful, so we just sort of carried it on. And the, the younger lads in the team come up with the name West Tommy Albion. We raised a few quid to, to buy a strip in the, in the Albion colours and uh, it's just taken off from there really. We've had regular games since, um, playing against teams such as the Territorial Army um, and we've just, we've just had such good fun that it's just carried on and carried on. So. Not often you get Albion fans with, with Wolves fans. No, well, I've got to be honest. Uh, <laughs> I'm just they're, there. they're good. They're good sports. they a lot of the lads in the team are Wolves fans, and I can sort of sympathise with them having to wear well, these I'll, colours I'll, when I was you're. Mention the colours on the shirt. Was, was that your choice? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was. Uh, okay. We wear our Wolves top. And but yeah, right. Ryan's skipper of the team, and, yeah, and I'll, I'll this shirt's always skipper. on underneath <laughs> that shirt when he when he plays. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they don't believe in allowing those colours to touch their, their skin. So it, it, they're good sports, I've got to say. So good. West Tomwich Albion, you um, obviously, would you call yourselves a charity charity 11, charity squad? Yeah, we're just a, just sort of a big circle of friends, really. Mm. It's just sort of made up of people that I work with, people that I'm friends with, people that I've played football with over the years, to sort of all come together and we just, everyone gets on really great and we have, have fun kicking a ball around, raising raising uh, vital funds for a lot of good charities. So and and you play when you do play your games. You know, there's not there's not one set charity that you guys are no, sort of raising so money far. for. It can it can depend entirely on. Yeah, we have, we've got we've got regular games that we play. We've got a help for heroes trophy um, when we play the the lads of D Squadron, the Territorial Army based in Dudley, um, which they kindly put on and. They sort of see it as an excuse to come back and keep playing, but that's a good uh, good thing that we do. Um, we have played for some charities more than once, but it, usually, it, depending on whoever contacts us and asks us for a game, they nine times out of ten have a charity in mind, um, a reason that they want to raise money for that charity, and as long as it's a good cause, our lads will pay their money and you know, and we'll raise raise key funds like so. You, yeah. you said earlier that you were getting inundated with, with requests and things. Yeah. So um, yeah. That, that must be like a really nice feeling for yeah, you. Yeah, it is. It's the, this world of social media that I've been introduced to um, through advertising the team. Um, and sort of words got around, you know, I get people messaging me saying, my friend played for so-and-so against you and whatever. And it, it, it's, it's great because I think it's, it pays tribute to to the lads that play because they're all they're all good lads. Um, the spirit's just that good, and you know we we don't have any set team talk or anything. We just we equal the game time out fairly, and we just say right lads, go out, enjoy it, keep smiling, and and that's it. So it's it's a really good really good thing that we got going. So yeah. I'm going to ask Tom what what's the level of playing like? How how skillful are the guys? Uh, I'd say it's a bit of a mixed level, to be honest. You've got some older fellas like myself that uh, struggle to get around the pitch so much, and then um, a few of the younger lads who are sort of pretty decent and whippets and get around. We've won a few games, we've had a few kickings along the way as well. So, yeah, it's not too bad overall, I don't think. So. And out of the three of you, uh, who would you say, you know, has got the, the most natural talent here? <laughs> <laughs> That's not a good sign. Yeah, he's not bad for an old man. <laughs> <laughs> But um, you guys, you've, you've got a big game Sunday, I yeah. believe. Um, tell us a little bit about, about that. Uh, we've got a game on Sunday against the All-Stars team from Wolverhampton Wanderers. Um, we're playing at Hensford Town. Hensford have been really, really good to us, basically giving us the, the keys to, to their ground. Um, we've turned it into a very much a family fun day. We've got bouncing castles, we've got face painting. Um, after the game, we've got a raffle with some really, really nice prizes, um, which includes a signed One Direction album, 
which we're really lucky to have. Um, we've got live music from um, a local uh, cover band called Troubadour. They cover anything from Blur and Oasis to the Beatles and Rolling Stones and things. They're fantastic lads that have uh, volunteered to come and play for us as well. Um, the charity that we're doing it for is a charity called Sands, um, which is a stillborn charity um, that we feel really, really strongly for. Um, and, and, and why did you choose to go for, for Sands? I know it's close to, to your yeah. heart, James. Yeah, <coughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, my daughter was born, stillborn, in May last year. And Tom approached me a couple of months afterwards to say, look, we really want to do a charity game in the name of Sands uh, for your daughter, Sophia. Um, I agreed to do it. It's, as you say, it's a charity close to myself and my wife's heart. Um, and it's been a, <clears throat> a really difficult 12 months, uh, but my friends, the family have been excellent. Um, we have our second child on the way as well now. Uh, so thank you. Um, so yeah, so Tom approached to say, look, we really want to do a charity game for you. Um, and I accepted it. And when he said it was the Wolves All Stars as well, I said, yep, yeah, no problem, definitely. So, uh, have, have Sans been in contact with you? Have you let them know what's going yes, on? Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, there'll be uh, Lady Claire from the uh, Wolverhampton Sands Committee uh, that really supported me and my wife after Sophia was born. Um, so, yeah, so we're looking to raise just as much money uh, for the charity. All money is going to charity. Hensford are not asking for a penny from us using the ground. Oh, that's great. Uh, so they've been excellent. And it's really all about getting the Black Country, Wolves and Albion together yeah, to just raise as much as we can. It's a bit of a Black Country derby, <laughs> yeah, you know, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only chance we'll get, I suppose. Well, yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. But we've been, we've been inundated by, um, by people people's generosity that they've been kindness that they've given us local businesses have, have sponsored us we've had donations we've got just giving pages which which have just gone through the roof it, 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 the people's Phenomenal. kindness has just really yeah. shone through um, yeah. so, I, I mean I, I'm, I'm guessing you know you guys have, a, have attracted a lot of you know media interest as well with this game especially with it being the Wolves All-Stars you know yeah, that, that, that only um, helps doesn't yeah, it? Yeah we've got a couple of the local papers um, they'll be printing something this week mm. and on the day there'll be a reporter there as well so mm. that would be really good we've tried to make it as official as possible to try and give everybody that match day experience uh, right down to the fans to the players haven't we mm -hmm. so yeah. you know we've done our own tickets we've done the own programmes uh, and that's all been funded by people donating money, and we're hoping to get a really good sum on uh, Sunday. So. Tom, you mentioned earlier there's, there's, there's going to be a lot of people here. It's not just you know a, a small event. There's no, yeah, we've uh, we've actually sold uh, um, today over 100 tickets. Um, we're due to sell at least another 100 tickets when people come to see us. Yeah. Um, and we we went to Hensford last week. They invited us over to go and watch the match and we spoke to a lot of people, we spoke to local businesses and literally it, it, it almost feels like the whole of Hensford is behind us, pushing it, supporting us, advertising. They've been fantastic. There's some really, we spoke to some really nice people and mm. yeah, so we're just raising awareness and trying to... Yep make everybody uh, want to come and see us, basically, yeah. you know. And, and have you had a lot of lads sort of, you know, keen to get involved with this one in particular? Yeah. Because yes. it's, yeah. you know, it's yeah. a Wolves yeah. 11, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, right from the original West Tommage Albion players that play every charity game, mm. right through to my friends. I've been inundated with people that have asked to play and I've, I've had to say no, but please come over and support us anyway. Yeah. So you The know. game's sort of been split up into two, whereas like, the lads that usually play are playing the first half and then James is picking like, a, a group of his friends to play the second half. Mm, so, yeah. you know, it's just, just all about having fun, really. And what, what about the ladies? We've had, no, we've had no yeah. ladies that have asked to play, <laughs> but yeah, they certainly... Sure, yeah. I'm, I'm sure Admiral will strap a beat. Certainly, <laughs> certainly, yeah. Say, yeah. Will, will you, you still be the skipper for both halves? Uh, I'll be skipper for the second half. Yeah. Um, I'll yeah. be playing for the James Gill 11, yeah. um, West Thomas Albion. Tom's going to lead them out, actually. He's yeah. going to strap on his to, knee brace and have I've a game, managed so. to, uh, yeah, I managed 60 minutes last week and... Uh, I scored as well. Can I just throw that one in? Can I just throw that one in? Or what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think it's him to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I'm going to put the boots back on, and uh, my aim is 15 minutes. <laughs> hey, if you can, so, if you can get yeah, out there, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and who yeah. from the the Wolves eleven have you have you got in? Do you know? Yeah. Well, we've got a we've got a from list. Um, they can't. They can never guarantee who's going to be there on mm. the day. Um, 
the From list is uh, people like Jody Craddock, um, Meleves. Who's Meleves, he's, Meleves is definitely playing, isn't he? Yeah. Well, yeah. I've, I've played against Meleves, and you know, despite him being a, a slightly older gentleman, let's say he's still fit as a absolutely. Bit, so yeah, yeah. Just, just yeah. yeah we don't need to hear that, to be honest. No, <laughs> no, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so the, there should be quite a few of the old Wolves players. We're hoping the likes of Robbie Dennison, etc. Andy Moore, uh, yeah. Don Goodman, yeah. and so Paul Jones. Get yourselves down there. Yeah, yeah. So any ex Wolves <laughs> players, please come on down. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Well, so the half time whistle is about to blow, but please join us after the break. Welcome back to Extra Time with me, Anne-Marie Beaujean and Mr James Bratpool. We're here talking to Ryan, James and Tom, Wolves and Albion fans. So guys, we're talking before the break just about what's going on on Sunday. Tell us about where else you've been playing and what else you've been doing. Um, well, Any standout matches you can... Yeah, we've had, a, we've had a, a few really good games. Our most difficult games have been against a local team called Sedger White Lions, who gave us an absolute good idea and half if I'm totally honest um, but we recently played um, against Boeing FC which is the official West Bromwich Albion supporters team um, and we actually became the first people along with Boeing to raise money for the newly formed Jeff Astle Foundation which was a very very proud day for us um, we actually had Claire Astle and Dawn Astle come and visit us as well to watch the match um, so yeah that was very much a standout game and we, uh, got us, uh, pretty much every game that we've played in we've had uh, played against some really good people everybody has very much got the charities in at heart and um, they're played in the right spirit and it's just it's really very enjoyable thing to do. Do you, do you find it you know in some matches I mean you'll find out this Sunday with causes that are close to your heart mm. do you find them sometimes you know particularly emotional and maybe perhaps a little bit sort of difficult to play in almost? Um, you find that there's some people come to watch the match that are very emotional, mm. particularly in um, a few games that we've had, um, people that have put a trophy on and so that you're playing for a trophy. It becomes personal then and um, just makes, the, makes it even more special and the fact that people are coming to us, asking us to play and putting on a, a trophy that we can play for um, makes it very very special to us and you know we appreciate everything that um, people have gone through and mm. whatever and uh, it's, it, we're very proud of very proud of what we do like yeah so looking ahead to Sunday what time do gates open they open at 12 yeah, yeah 12 o'clock gates 12 open at 12 um, looking to kick off at 2 o'clock mm. um, yeah. What time is alcohol being served? Um, um, hopefully <laughs> 12 o'clock. Um, <laughs> not before the game, surely. <laughs> yeah, not us. We're yeah. Not no, we're professionals. But, yeah, we're um, professionals. Yeah, and then yeah. the bar's going to be open until sort of quite late, maybe half 12 yeah. ish as well. So Definitely. this is absolutely no oh, excuse. Yeah. Yeah. Bank holiday weekend. Yeah, bank holiday yeah. weekend. Yeah. What else do you want to No work yeah. Monday, no excuses. Exactly. exactly. So yeah. if you're free, please come <laughs> on over. Yeah. And, and uh, how much is it to. Yeah, to get four it? pounds. Yeah. Uh, and the kids are free. So okay. our children are free and we want just as many there. It is a family day out. Mm. Hopefully the weather holds off for us. Fingers crossed. Yeah, yeah. fingers <laughs> crossed. Um, so, yeah, just come on down if you are free. And in terms of the game and your, your sort of feelings about it, how do you think you're going to get on? Uh, the all Wolf Stars will win. <laughs> just be we glad of a few touches, I think, to be honest. <laughs> 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 if, we are, if we aim aim for below 20, yeah. we'll just... <laughs> yeah. you're going to park the bus, are you, on Sunday? Yeah. Oh, no, we're not going to do that. There's no point. There's no point. We might as well just go, <laughs> go for, for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, as, long as, as long as everybody enjoys themselves, then the results... Yeah. Irrelevant, That's really, the, you know. So, yeah, yeah, but I don't think they'll have too much to worry about, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> be nice if one of you got a, a goal, wouldn't it? On a, on it would, yeah. yeah. It'd be yeah, nice just, to just get the that far up the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll probably celebrate a corner, to be honest. So. <laughs> <laughs> just, we've, we've got to ask you guys about this then, about your season. Start with Wolves. Oh, um, <laughs> and then you've yeah. obviously got, it just comes down to one game, basically. It does. I think we've had a fantastic season. I think Kenny Jackett has done absolute wonders since he took over at the club. Um, you know, the last season was phenomenal. I've, I've been supporting Wolves since 88 and last season was the most enjoyable out of all the seasons that I've gone down the Wolves. 
this season, you know, I thought middle table if we're lucky, and we, you know we've been challenging for playoffs. So I think Kenny Jackets. Yeah, really we'd take anything above tenth this season. Yeah, so you know, I think we're all chuffed no matter what happens yeah, Saturday. So sort of I think we are going to miss season. out, but you never know. You never know. I think it's interesting that you say that that it, you know you've been supporting them since '88, yeah. and that it's last season was the most enjoyable. Definitely, because you know some fans might argue that spending a season in the Premier League and finishing say 15th or 14th sure. might be you know, more of an achievement or more enjoyable yeah. for them yeah. um, but for you it's more about sort of winning um, Yeah I think for, for us you know, don't get me wrong being in the Premiership financially is much better for the club yeah. uh, and it's great for the fans to visit the, the new stadiums but I think Wolves fans especially from my generation that are used to going to the lower league clubs back when we were in Division 4 and Division 3 last season was fantastic to go to the likes of Stevenage etc so you know I think we all really really yeah, enjoyed it Yeah it was really good you know, so yeah. I think and just to call all on a Tuesday yeah. night <laughs> if you're winning every match yeah. it helps well it, it, it yeah. makes you feel happy doesn't yeah. it uh, yeah. Yeah. So do you go on the away days much or um, last season yeah. I only missed four games so oh, right. Carlisle on a Tuesday night, yeah. you know, that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, um, but, you know, it was great. This season I haven't been to as many away games, but I, I go to all the home games. Um, Are you going to be there on, on Saturday? Yes, yeah, I'm a season ticket holder, so uh, the delightful Millwall are coming to town. So. <laughs> You're going to have the Derby game like up on the radio? You're going to have it? Um, I think, yeah, our phones will be going off, yeah. but, you know, I don't think we're expecting anything. So if it does, fantastic. And we'll then win the playoffs and we'll go up. <laughs> I was saying it'd be, it'll be, I mean, tough for, for Wolves to hold on to your front three, I'd have thought. Yeah. If uh, if you if you guys don't go up over, yeah, I think everyone so. kind of accepts that Sacco will be gone. Um, mm. I think if Obi and Dicko, you know, if Obi's only just started with us, he's had a great start. He looks a yeah. brilliant player, but yeah. I'd be surprised if he goes. But then again, this is football; anything can happen, yeah. can't it? Um, Dicko, Obi, Sacco. That's it. Yeah, magic. I think they're uh, quite settled there, and, yeah. and magic as the sun goes as well. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And you know, if you go up, of course, you'll have a. A local rival if, if, in, yeah. in this lot over here. If they stay up, that yeah. is, yeah. Oh. Nice. <laughs> we, we, nice. owe, we owe Albion a lot. From the last kind of ten seasons, they've literally beat us every time they've played us and beat us easily. Was it was it five one that? Yeah, right. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we owe yeah. Albion big time. So yeah. uh, I'd look forward to playing them next. Uh, and how would you sort of rate Albion's season so far, as it were? <laughs> Um, that good, eh? Yeah, yeah difficult, <laughs> difficult. Um, I think it's been a sort of difficult period since Roy Hodgson left a few years ago, really, to go from, well, uh, some people might argue with me, but the best coach that I've ever known at the, at the Albion to sort of Steve Clark, who was well worth a punt, did a decent job for a long time, wore out thin, to Pepe Mel, which... I mean, <laughs> uh, possibly the less said, the better with Pepe yeah. Mel. But I mean, I remember the last day of uh, of the season when Pepe Mel was in charge, and all the Albion fans, you know, mm. um, Spanish flags mm. and sombreros, and uh, it, mm. he was a nice guy. He was yeah. a great guy, but perhaps it, whatever it the just reason didn't fit. was, you could see, you could always see what he was trying to do. Mm. It just nothing materialised at all, and it just not not Pepe Mel as such. The whole club just became a bit of a circus really for a period of time and and then Alan Irvine came in was never going to be anybody's first choice Great manager. he's uh, <laughs> he, he, he was, he came across to me I've got to speak as you find he came across as a really good guy they think he was a good coach good coaches don't always make good managers and uh, it, it's been left up to Tony Poulis to well, turn us back to a team hard to beat so if to speak you he would have been the man to stay in the division, chosen, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I yeah. think. I think. To, I, in all fairness to the club, when Alan Irvine was appointed, there wasn't really that much no. around to, no, to choose yeah. from. You're absolutely right, and, and you've got to be realistic as well. We're not always going to turn around and get another Roy Hodgson all the time, but but certainly Tony Pulis has, has um, steadied the ship a little bit. It's not Dean always. Saunders was available at the time. I suppose you still remember his name. <laughs> not the uh, not the most attractive football to watch, but we needed points on board. Mm. He's got just about enough, I think, to keep us in the division now. So give him the give him the summer. Mm. Let him. Have you gotten over the fact that 
you know, Villa pipped you to go into Wembley. I'll never get over the fact that Villa beat, <laughs> bit, bit that, Villa yeah. beat us twice, twice in a week. <laughs> twice in a week. I'll never get over that. <laughs> no, no. But yeah. I, I mean, what, uh, one of the sort of more positive things about, I guess, about your season is um, Brownie Day. First half of the season looked well. Mm. Looked like how, how was he a professional footballer? And then all of a sudden, TP comes in and mm. he's he's scoring goals for fun almost. I know he's dropped off yeah. a little bit lately, but yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I think the one thing that you can say about Brownie Day is nobody particularly saw him enough at the start of the season too. It, the, yeah. the little bits that you did see him, you thought, who is this guy kind of thing, but. You know, people have persisted. They've worked with him in training, and uh, every time that he goes on the pitch, okay, his goals have dried up a little bit. But the guy works hard. And who do you think's going down then? And don't say Villa. <laughs> I think it's nice and impartial. <laughs> unfortunately, I think Burnley might. I think for all their spirit that they've got, they've just run out of puff a little bit. Probably QPR, and then probably. Sunderland. Maybe Sunderland, yeah, Sunderland. I would have thought. Yeah. I so think. you think you're. You're safe. Just about, I think. Yeah. Just I think the about. Win at Palace pro Just probably did it. Sorted, made didn't up it? for losing at home to Leicester and QPR, which, yeah. well, conceding yeah. seven goals at home yeah. in two games to. Oof. Yeah, it was. Uh, all of a sudden, we went from thinking we'll be all right now, you know, can see the season out, start afresh to, oh dear, what's going on here? And, but, and lads, quickly, do you think you'll be up or. Still in the championship next year. I, I, I don't really see the results going our way Saturday, so I think it'll be championship next year. Well, that's the full time whistle. I would like to thank our guests, Ryan, James and Tom, for joining us. But that's it for today, so bye-bye, take care.